Good afternoon, good morning. We are really happy to welcome you here all in Geneva. We are with uh, Philippe in, uh, in Geneva from GEM Genève, thanks to the organization. And uh, in this wonderful fair where you have so many gemstones, so many uh, wonderful uh, antique jewelry. So my name is Olivier Segura. I am the scientific director of L'Ecole, School of Jewelry Arts. Uh, and I'm really, really uh, super happy to be here uh, tonight, today, tonight here in Geneva, with Philippe, uh, Philippe Nicolas, who is a heart uh, engraver, gemstone engraver, uh, from the Maison Cartier. And we are discussing uh, today together about the glyptic and all the wonderful marvels uh, you realize in, in, your, in your career. So, don't hesitate to ask your questions. Gisela Okreman is uh, with you on the chat. Uh, you know Gisela, our uh, art history teacher, uh, specialist now of the organization for the conference. Gisela, do you want to come? Yes, at the camera. I know you have a lot of fun, and I'm sure they want to see you in live because you organize a lot of conferences. So thank you, Gisela. Merci. Bravo, Gisela. Hi, everyone. Good to be with you on the chat today. The floor is yours, gentlemen. Thank you, Gisela. So we are organizing and talking about glyptics uh, today because we are organizing uh, at L'Ecole, School of Jewelry Art in Paris, a quite amazing exhibition about engraved gems. Uh, it is a, a whole collection uh, by Guy Ladrière, a collector, a famous collector, who selects many pieces of uh, cameo intaglio rings, uh, necklace, uh, what else, uh, brooches. Oh, so that's really, really impressive from different, uh, different time, different period. And uh, because of this uh, exhibition, we wanted to talk together about the art of glyptics. And the art of glyptics, uh, we decided to have four chapters. So what is glyptics? Uh, second, the glyptics materials, the techniques and the tools. And then uh, we will talk about emotion and education. So what is glyptics? Maybe some of you uh, never heard this word uh, before. And to go through all this uh, presentation, we decided with Philip uh, to have some quotes, some uh, sentence by uh, Ernest Bablon. Uh, Ernest Bablon was a famous uh, historian, French historian, and he wrote some, uh, some books uh, about uh, glyptics. Uh, there is not so many books about glyptics, uh, but this one is quite famous. The name is La Gravure des Pierres Fines, uh, the engraving of fine gemstones. Uh, written in 1894, and this was, it was quite uh, interesting to read again uh, this book when we prepared the, the talk. And starting with uh, Bablon, trying to describe, to define what is a glyptics, a glyptics sorry, uh, Bablon said, the art of engraving stones is called glyptics, from the ancient Greek glyptos, which means engraved object. So the relief engraving produces the cameos, uh, and the counter relief engraving produces intaglios. So this Bablon is quite famous. So you know very well, of course, Ernest Bablon. Uh, uh, <coughs> thank you, Olivier. Um, I don't know exactly uh, this Bablon, Mr. Ernest Bablon, but I know a Bablon. He's uh, Jean-Pierre Bablon. He's uh, today. Uh, an, academy, an academician in France, and I did for him uh, uh, an engraving, engraving in uh, on a crystal, uh, on uh, his uh, épée of academician. You know how do you say? Yeah, the, the sword. Yes, to, to, of to, to. academician. So f I know, uh, you know, uh, Bablon also. I uh, I read uh, his book. And um, what is interesting is when he said that the glyptic is like uh, uh, an art uh, monumental because it's so difficult to engrave the, the stones that uh, he said uh, it's the same work for a monumental sculpture in marble, for example. 
And uh, also, what is uh, Gliptic? Gliptic is uh, today uh, has been nominated by uh, UNESCO Intangible uh, Cultural Heritage. And uh, they say uh, by this uh, nomination that uh, it's an art uh, begin from the, the, the humanity. The humankind, the, yeah. Yes, and it's why uh, it's very important to. Uh, to understand this, uh, this work and to transmit it. Exactly, and uh, we will see during the presentation the importance of, uh, of transmission. So you have here two samples of one cameo and one intaglio which will be on, uh, on display during the, the exhibition. So, following the definition of, uh, of uh, engraving, of uh, glyptics, uh, Bablon described that the Greeks made a precise distinction whatever the material used by the artist between engraving in relief and the hollow, what is called uh, diagliptic. And in this sentence, uh, it was interesting to me to, to focus on whatever the material used by the artist. Uh, the, for example, in first, you see pictures. He, uh, are uh, pictures come from my, uh, my first uh, school, was in a... In a in école uh, of art in France, and uh, it was uh, 50 years before I was young, <laughs> and uh, I began to uh, to engrave glasses. And after I use the same technique uh, because it's similar technique to uh, to to engrave uh, art stones and fine stones. That's interesting because uh, when you started at that time to engrave the glass. Did you have an idea? Did, can you imagine what you will do after? Uh, in my in my life, uh, very young, I uh, I uh, want to be a sculptor, but I don't know if it was it, sh it would be on uh, on stones or on uh, marbles. Uh, uh, marble. White yeah. marbles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and the, as after I discovered this technique, and at the Beaux Arts School, which we, we play we play after. Is at uh, Beaux Arts School there, there was also uh, a class a class of sculpture of fight on fine stones. Oh yeah, great. So starting with glass, you can end with uh, gemstones. Yes. And uh, as Bablon said, in the same way, the Greeks made a difference between the engravers of gems, the lapidary, the polish the cut and polished gem, and the jeweler, which is responsible for mounting and setting uh, the gems. And as nowadays, uh, you have different kinds of, uh, of hands, of work uh, involved in the uh, jewelry pieces. And uh, of course, maybe the lapidary cannot do the glyptics uh, products, the glyptics uh, gemstones. And you, maybe, you cannot do the same works as a lapidary. Yes, that's true. It's not the same work. My, my work, it's a work of uh, art uh, sculpture and uh, art engraving, engraver. And so I, I don't know uh, the work of lapidary. Lapidary is a, is a technique work, how to sublime the, 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 the gems, how to polish it, to faceting it. My work is to do a drawing, to a sculpture, and it's an artistic work. And when you talk about artists, art, uh, we select this uh, <laughs> incredible yes, gems, uh, which, is, which will be on display also uh, during the, the exhibition. And <coughs> sorry, I, s I select this uh, this uh, this cameo, this intaglio, sorry, because as a gemologist, I really love the material. Here we have a ruby coming from Burma, and you see uh, probably engraved. Uh, at the first century um, after Christ, and it, it is the Emperor Augustus rubbing Taglio, probably the seal used by the Emperor uh, at that time. So, to me, the material, the engraving, the emotion of the engraving is quite unique. But for yes. you, when we talk about this, you see different things. Yes, no, for me it's very uh, incredible, uh, this uh, creativity, freedom, inspiration. Inspiration comes from the rough, the, the mati material. You understand that uh, the, to, to engrave 
Uh, cameo uh, and intaglio is very, very uh, in ruby is very hard stones, and it's very difficult uh, technically. And what what we can see here is we we see a, a, a freedom inspiration, and we don't we don't feel um, the abnegation you need you need to do this work, and we. Uh, we have uh, an, um, an artist uh, with a very important maturity, you understand? And it's, uh, it's a great emotion. Also, you see how he used uh, the rough of material. He did the, uh, the hair in s with, the, um, with the back of the, of the stone where, you're, where rough uh, inside you have uh, uh, inclusion. And he used it uh, very... Uh, very easy, uh, this, uh, this material. Yes, and the face is really in a, in a part of the stone which is really clean. Yes. So we can see clearly all the details uh, of the nose, eyes. Exactly. It's typically uh, the work I like very much when the rough inspires uh, the project. Exactly. And we will see it after with some of the examples you, you did. Uh, in our second part, we'll talk about the, the different materials and uh, with Bablon, we can say that in Glyptics, the material, uh, far from being indifferent, is one of the essential elements of the art and of the appreciations we have for its products. Uh, and this is one piece of your samples you have in your workshop. Yes, I like very much it because you see it's rough. It's a rough where we, we can do a very nice, uh, for example, cameo. You see, it's it's a uh, it's an agate, uh, and uh, this agate uh, has uh, have a, a very uh, clean uh, white uh, slide, uh, and uh, this part, so the white part, is very very hard. Uh, and uh, when you want to 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 work with it to do a cameo, you use this part because it's so fine. You can uh, you can have a, you can have a very Nice engraving, nice uh, drawing. Very precise, exactly. Graving, engraving. And here also on this rough, what is interesting is the color. You see, you ha we, we can imagine that this rough will be with um, with a uh, oxide of iron mm -hmm. and gives this color orange. And uh, you see, the color is not in the white part. It's because uh, when, uh, when since uh, the ancient Roman, uh, they use this stone to make a cameo, they use it and they can color the, 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 the cameo in, uh, in brown black color with sugar, for example, because... First treatment at that time. Yes, and because you see um, the white part don't take the the color, mm. but the other, the other part is more uh, porous, porous. Yes, difference of density, and porosity. Density, yes, and it's, it's a good example of what the, the, the nature, the coincidence of the nature can give us uh, to work uh, the art stone. Yes, and a great example also of a typical stone for cameo exactly. and for the glyptician, voilà. for the engraver, the gem engraver. That is a good choice. And uh, as Bablon asks, uh, under what condition does nature offer this rough material to the artist? So maybe I won't ask you in which part of the nature you are looking for your stones, but how oh, can you buy, how oh, can you find uh, this, all this wonderful material you are using? The best market uh, in the world is uh, the Tucson Gem Show. is where uh, I uh, sometimes I have to go to find, to, 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 to do choice uh, the rough because you know i have um, in um, in my workshop what i transmit i have a, a workshop inside the maison cartier i opened it uh, 12 years before it's very a very special uh, workshop because you understand we buy the rough we cut it and we choose it we choose the part we want in the rough and after we have an inspiration to do it it's very rare to have uh, a uh, workshop where you can do uh, like that uh, since a rough uh, a project. From uh, the rough until the finished uh, jewel. Exactly. And uh, here, so in Tucson, 
And we can see you in the picture here in the middle. You yes. spend time <laughs> selecting, uh, uh. looking for the different gemstones. And uh, why in this basket, for example, of violet stone, why you select this one, but not this, this other one? What's, uh. what's in your eye? Make yes, it's my eye and uh, what I say is a little my instinct too. And uh, it's what I want to transmit. It's a color. It's a, it's a maybe uh, sometimes uh, uh, no no crack and no no failure. And sometimes I can use it if I want for the creation. For why not? Uh, and uh, it's uh, my higher uh, I, I have and I want to transmit to. And uh, you have uh, other uh, gem show in the world. For example, you have in German in Germany. And in France too, Saint Marie aux Mines. It's Marie very Mines. nice uh, market too. Yeah. Yes, we we sometimes uh, cross or meet on <laughs> in the market looking for gemstones. Uh, this is in the next slide uh, a part, a small part of your workshop mm. with some samples you select uh, during your different uh, travels. It's exactly it's um, what I uh, I say. It is my little tech. It's a special uh, uh, furniture where, uh, where you have all uh, the, the nice uh, roof I can buy uh, in, uh, in my life since, uh, in my life since uh, uh, so, so 30, uh, 30 years. And uh, you see how uh, it's very different. We chose it by the color, by the, uh, the, the material, the texture. It's what I transmit to, to, to my apprentice. And uh, for all these stones, you, s you have already the idea of what you will do with all these stones in your, in your head, in your mind? Yes, generally, yes. But uh, you know, I have so many stones, maybe I never can do it a uh, project uh, in all stones. <laughs> so, you know, we, I do, so. we do uh, one or two pieces per year. So it's uh, complicated to uh, know. Uh, I like, yes, when I buy these stones, it's because I know I can do something inside. So one day, maybe. When the first time I, I visit your, your workshop, I was very impressed by this kind of ma uh, material, uh, this petrified uh, arrocaria here in the, in the center. So uh, from million years ago, uh, this kind of pine tree, this arrocaria, uh, was, was petrified on the, the apple uh, cone. Uh, was uh, was petrified, and when I saw it, it was so so amazing because of the color, the texture, and we can see the structures uh, yes. also inside the seeds, the dot, the black dot, maybe are the seeds. Uh, so that's really impressive. And you did your team propose this. Uh, I like very much design. this project because you know it come from my uh, first uh, apprentice. I say it's uh, Emily. And uh, Emily was not my uh, first apprentice man, when I was not master of art. And we worked together since uh, 15 years. And now she manages my workshop inside the Maison Cartier. And it's very good, uh, good aventure all uh, together. And I like very much his drawing because he come from uh, this uh, Emily. And uh, as you say, we found uh, this uh, very rare uh, petrified uh, pine cone. And uh, we realized uh, she has this idea. And after I, uh, I follow, I, I uh, I accompany, come on, I met her <coughs> to, uh, to continue this project. Uh, we have to cut, uh, you see, to find the best part inside the, the stone we found. And uh, it's what I transmit to to my uh, apprentice. This experience I have is in, in my life with uh, the confrontation, confrontation with the uh, with the material. Exactly. And uh, for our, all our friends behind the screen, I know we have a lot from from US. Uh, the, the day, the, no, the day, the year after I went to um, to to Tucson, and you. Uh, Likely, you give me the name of the, the provider, seller. the seller, and I, I went to to to, se to to see to see him, and I ask him, "Do you have petrified arrocaria?" And he looked at me with strange eyes. I know, uh, oh, do you know? I had it, but it is so rare, so it's very difficult to find. So unfortunately, 
I don't have any more this kind of uh, material. So if you can, if you try, I'm still uh, interested to to you, have it. You have to ask me. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> we'll talk about after after the talk. Um, uh, following Bablon, he said that the domain of the gem and graver extends to all the stones, which in nature are likely to receive a beautiful polish and to undergo without disintegrating a work of sculpture. So that's interesting because Bablon says really all the stones, all kind of material can be used by uh, the glyptician, by the gem and gravers. And uh, we selected here a few samples of what are probably the most used uh, material, uh, which is part of the large family uh, of the quartz, uh, as for example, the blue chalcedony, the red jasper, the carnelian, uh, which are really material for the gemologist, all parts of the quartz family, but for, the, for you, maybe okay. not exactly the same. No, it's very different. You know, here you have, so uh, it's the same family, it's quartzist, but you see the, the red stones in center is a jasper, and it's very, very different because sometimes jasper has a special uh, concentration, special uh, density, and uh, it's not the same work when you have to, to work it. Uh, and it's why uh, it's, uh, it's uh, funny when I speak with people like you, uh, know uh, scientific stones, and, uh, <laughs> and you don't know my work too, for example. Yeah, nobody, nobody said I'm funny, but that's OK. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so this, uh, this slide is maybe not so funny, so thank you, uh, thank you, thank you Philippe. Uh, it's a few, few words uh, just uh, to, to tell you that uh, names change during the time and during history. Here we have the huge family uh, for quartz, so we know very well the microcrystalline quartz, so which are the citrine, amethyst, rose quartz, uh, crystal, uh, rock crystal. Uh, these are the microcrystalline uh, quartz, but there is so many, this is a huge family for the chalcedony, the microcrystalline uh, quartz family with different names as chrysoprase, sard, cornaline, onyx, agate, and the agate, there is also different uh, parts of, uh, of this family, uh, which means that if you read some old books, maybe you can read some names. Uh, for, for gemstones, and in fact, it's not the same used today. Yes, sometimes uh, the words can change. For example, today we say chrysoprase, but you have also chrysopala. It's, it's the same family, but uh, you know, with the time, we can, uh, we can change uh, the, the name sometimes. Yes, and we, when we talk with, uh, with our friends, our mineralogist friends, yes. they are, ooh, it's a nightmare for them because they're all quartz, so they're different. Uh, where it's, really, uh, it's really different. So let's dive into your work, yes. uh, your artwork, uh, yes. material by material. And uh, we selected the first one, which is black jasper, with a very specific and very uh, impressive uh, idea of, uh, of strength, of uh, vitality, of force. Yes, in first, you see, uh, Bablon said that uh, we polish uh, the, the stone, but uh, I don't polish the stone because I am a sculptor and I'm not a lapidary, you see. And here you see yeah. how I, I, uh, I, I find the just... Uh, it's a great example. It's not so sparkling. It's very yes. soft. It's soft and uh, sometimes uh, I finish it like that. And after, you see, uh, with this, uh, the choice of the black jasper, you, you, you feel uh, the, the power and, the, and the how the stone is strong. And uh, it's what, uh, it's a feeling with the stones I, I want to, 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 to teach, to give to my uh, apprentice like that. And you know, when we, when we sell these uh, this stones, the people, when they, 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 they buy it, they, they, uh, they have this feeling of the power and the, Yes, you told me even the client really feels the same, uh, yes, exactly. the same emotion. And many, Oops, uh, men, many men uh, like to have this, uh, this uh, would like to have this bracelet. Yes, would like to. But it's a too. unique uh, <laughs> piece, you know. Even if we ask you to do it again, you, yes, yes, you yes. don't do it. No. Okay, good to know. <laughs> next, next, uh, next slide, we talk about another very interesting material, quite rare, uh, which is pink uh, chalcedony. 
And you told me this one was from uh, Namibia. Yes. And in first, I would like to speak about the drawing. You know, uh, it's interesting in the maison, like uh, the Maison Cartier, you know, the, the Maison of Jewelry, is a collective work. It's not uh, an independent work. I am not independent. I, I, work, I work with all people, uh, with all people inside the Maison, and the drawing comes from another studio. In my studio, we can draw, but also we can, we can do drawing come from other studios. And here it's a project uh, with uh, Chalcedony. I like very much uh, this uh, stones because it's very fine uh, material and uh, it's pink and it's rare to find uh, pink Chalcedony. Translucent, uh, opaque uh, gemstone. In, and for the people uh, come from Namibia, Africa, and from for the, some uh, seller from uh, Ida Roberstein in Germany where I, I bought this, uh, this rough, they say uh, you are the first to ask us uh, this, uh, this material. It's why I, why I say uh, we can work all material. And what is rare in this material is not it's precious, like we say for emerald, sapphire, ruby. No, it's, it's, uh, it's very rare and precious for me, for my uh, heart. And it's precious uh, thanks to your work. Yes. <laughs> like, for example, this one. This is a yes. fossilized, petrified wood. This is very this interesting material. Yes. You, you like it, I know. And uh, this one, the petrified wood you see uh, on your left, uh, comes from uh, Australia. The name is Peanuts Wood uh, because you have a, a warm heat, the, the, the wood, uh, million, million years before. You know, this wood is uh, it's a material, uh, is a cup of uh, oxygen, uh, and after, with the time, uh, uh, ox cut of oxygen, oxygen by a genical, uh, uh, geological processes, processes of phenomena exactly. like like a volcanic uh, yes, eruption. with ashes blocking from the from the hair exactly, from the light exactly. And uh, after you have the water, uh, slowly, slowly, give give the, the, the small, uh, how do you say, uh, molecule of. Uh, yes, they replace slowly, slowly the, uh, the, the organic quartz. material Silic by silicium. Silicate. Yeah. And uh, this is a story of this graphic uh, of on the on the petrified wood, peanut wood. Huh? It's why you have this graphic because a warm heat the wood in, the, in his life. Yes, and I, I thought at first look it was a tiger, but in fact it's a panther. Ah oui, it's a panther. It's a panther, <laughs> yes, I, I agree with you. <laughs> and after, on the right, you have uh, a oak come from United States, and it's a very nice uh, piece of uh, petrified wood. Petrified uh, oak, yeah. yes. And uh, you, you are quite a funny touch, it's because you use petrified oak Yes. To represent oak leaves. Exactly. To give to, to, to give a new a new life a new life of this uh, old material come from the, the dark time of the of the time. And uh, I like very much this story. And here also you see the collective work by the jewelry uh, jeweler and uh, and all people work in uh, in the maison uh, with me. And uh, sometime one crystal like, for example, this one on the left, was really at the beginning of all the projects uh, for the, for the J-Well. Yes, it's very funny. We, we, we found just this uh, little piece of quartz, and uh, you see you have little uh, black uh, spot uh, on the quartz and on the material, and after, you see, we have all this uh, project. Uh, Emily did it also, and I like very much uh, 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 this poetic. It's, uh, it's very, very nice. I like very much how you see with a little rough, we, we, we make like that. Uh, and you create a I, 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 uh, project. And this is a small bottle. I don't see on the, yes. on the black one, maybe yes. with a black uh, background, a you can see this really hollow tube inside. Exactly. It's like. Uh, 
a bottle of uh, perfume on panther. Perfume. panther. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. no. And on the right? And on the right, it's a little brush come from this uh, very, very nice amethyst. I found it in, uh, uh, with, uh, by a seller at Ida Robertstein. And it's an old collection of uh, very, very, uh, very, very uh, nice uh, rough of amethyst. Yes. It's, uh, Yes, yes. Super I don't know if you know this kind of amethyst with uh, red sparkles inside. Yes. That's very rare. Usually we say that's red from light. Russia. Yes. Uh, but there is light inside, really red sparkling. Uh, that's really great material, very rare. Yeah. Let's talk about techniques and tools and as Bablon said. Yeah. Quite interesting when I read it again. Let's now enter the workshop of a fine stone engraver. What strikes us at a first glance is the extreme simplicity of the apparatus of work, the modesty of the tools. I let you read all the description very precise. Um, and we can find it also in this engraving. This engraving comes from uh, uh, an engraving of uh, Jacques Gay. It was uh, in an engraver uh, in uh, eight, 18th uh, century. 51, yeah. And uh, he was... Um, He teach to Madame de Pompadour. She liked very much this uh, this art. She want to do it, uh, and it's uh, very simple. My my uh, tools are the same. The difference is that uh, big difference uh, is that now I have an electric uh, motor. Electricity <laughs> yeah. to, to to turn the yeah. the wheels. Uh, this is this is could be your workshop. Uh, not on the on the left is not my workshop. No. But it could be if I had a, a house with a special uh, yes. water uh, moulin, and you know how <laughs> do you say, and it's very an old uh, system to. Uh, uh, so you have to break the power, but. Exactly. Except for electricity, voilà. all the tools. The tools are the same because I work every day with it uh, to engrave. Uh, huh? It is mine. I, the, the more simple I found, I had, I have, uh, as, at this time when I found it, uh, I am 22 years. Uh, I bought it in Germany. And you see, it's very funny because the tools uh, come from nice and uh, you, you, you do yourself uh, the form you need, uh, you see. And um, because I am an homophaber, an homophaber, it's a man make uh, making his own tools herself. Voilà, exactly. And uh, you see, uh, it's a very very simple uh, uh, tools. Yes. So you use uh, these tools uh, made from nails, and after you use a diamond powder oil. To what, what, to what, keep what you see here on the left, yes. It's, it's, Good it question. Is, uh, What is on the left? A pilon to to uh, ah, yes. to, 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 to cut the, the, the diamond. Yeah. To crush to crush the yeah. diamond in very small voilà. powder. Yes, I like very much it because like that I can have different size in, inside the, the, the pilon. And uh, for example, if I want to engrave a ruby, for today I am engraving a, a, an emerald, and uh, I use exactly these tools. Great, and you you you. That's amazing yeah. because you, you realize you create your tools. Yes. That really amazed me because when we need a hammer or something like that, we go in the shop and we buy it, but you, no, you, no, you not need to do it by yourself. Yes, I can do it myself. And uh, fortunately, luckily, you can use also some actual tools like binocular to help you in your everyday job. Yes, binocular and, uh, and as a technique, we don't speak it uh, about today because it's too uh, complicated. But you know, I am master of art today, but uh, for the future, I have to use aussi the new, t the new tools. And I develop it inside the Maison Cartier. We are uh, in, very, uh, in the point uh, dans ce travail de at recherche. The top at the top of research and top. development. Exactly. So you create I also am. new techniques and new tools. Because the new technique, you know, uh, can uh, uh, c'est important d'utiliser pour uh, soulager le le travail pénible. Yes, it's important to use for the difficult uh, work. Yes. So to help to avoid any uh, problem troubles, if you can with techniques, of course we do it. No need uh, exactly. glasses. You have microscope. In our last uh, chapter, we wanted to talk about emotion and uh, education. Uh, why? Because when I first 
arrived in this, uh, in this field, the first time I saw an engraved piece, I really had a huge uh, emotion. Uh, and I think when you behind the screen, uh, or if you have the ability, the opportunity to look by yourself an engraved gems, there is something very powerful, there is a very strong emotion. And I think with these pieces, I had a great emotion. And today, I think you. Today, we have seen something with a very oh, yeah. big emotion. We see a piece uh, in a. Uh, uh, auction. Uh, yes, uh, auction, and yeah, uh, it was a sculpture I did, and it's it's very uh, a great emotion when when I see it. And here you see what w what we want to say is that uh, this work you cannot uh, you cannot uh, transmit this work if you are not emotion if you have not e emotion, and it's it's the first before the creation. It's uh, how when the the the, the Clients, when the, when the amateur of art see the piece, have an emotion is the, the first, you understand, for the creation. Yes, and you have a, a nice formula saying there is no art. There is no art with no spectator, with, there is no eye theory, uh, so nice uh, sculpture engraving. Exactly. If you have no uh, great clients, like it's very much. And, and uh, it's also for the for the maison. It's very important because you know, it's it's like uh, authentic. It's yeah. uh, an authenticity. It's very important for the maison to 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 have workshop like that, uh, like that inside, because you know you transmit also this authenticity. Yeah, this history of jewelry, a part exactly, of the history. Exactly, because the stones are the uh, the ADN of the of the DNA. Jewelry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when we uh, selected, when you wanted to select this slide, um, I was not so so emotional with this uh, this kind of uh, of art. But after you told me the story, I find it very very interesting. Yes, it's a story of uh, of uh, of men ask a very a special order was uh, to engrave uh, his father on a uh, on portrait of, the or father. Portrait of right. his father. And uh, after, uh, uh, his wife, uh, this, uh, this man, uh, when she has, she has seen this, uh, this work, she was so uh, uh, ému. She, she asked me to, to engrave uh, the portrait of the father for uh, all uh, children they have. For all the brothers and uh, all the children. Exactly. And it's what I, I mean is that uh, sometimes, you know, it's not the work necessary. Here it's uh, for some people to engrave a portrait. It's an ancient uh, work. It's uh, an ancient technique. But sometimes yeah, just to engrave uh, a, a word on a, on a stone, it's very important for some people. Yes, I, I know. And... Uh, here is where everything started. And uh, here it's just to say uh, it's a Beaux Arts on the, on the left and Ecole Boulle on the right. How uh, is important to uh, uh, to work to transmit this work because you know today you have no schools where you can uh, you can learn it. And uh, I have I, uh, I had uh, never a master of art, and today I am lucky to uh, to. Uh, to have apprentice in the maison, like that, uh, I hope to transmit this work. Exactly, because we, you talk, we talk about students, about what you teach, but you don't uh, teach in a school. Uh, you teach inside your workshop exactly. to all the apprentice uh, you yeah, can exactly. have. And, um, and luckily, also, you can travel, thanks to the maison, to explain your art and to show your art. And for example, you're just back for one month in Venice. Yes. That's why just now every of our friends a good moment. are closing, <laughs> the <laughs> closing the presentation. They say, what a lucky man. Uh, because you were at uh, Homo Faber yes. explaining uh, what is... Uh, uh, Homo Faber, it's an exhibition uh, fair. Uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Rupert, the chairman of uh, Richmond, and uh, decide to uh, to create this uh, this exhibition with uh, his foundation. The foundation is the uh, foundation of Michelangelo, and uh, and Mr. Colony also, Mr. Rupert and Mr. Colony, and uh, they decide to create this uh, exhibition 
they say uh, the craftsman for the futur, and uh, we present to public uh, some special technique, very rare, and they asked me to uh, to present my my art of the glyptic. And here it's a good example. I did uh, this uh, engraving of Panther in on citrine. Uh, I begin it in, in the first uh, Homo Faber first uh, edition. edition. 2018? Yes, and I continue to present this engraving in different exhibitions in uh, China and in uh, Japan. And uh, a client uh, visit me to, 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 to do the presentation. And when the, 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 the project uh, was finished six months ago, uh, the seller uh, called this, uh, this man and uh, this client and the uh, the seller sent him uh, a, a picture and he bought it uh, like that directly. Directly because he had the memory to visit you in, a, it, it's, in Tokyo it's a, and it's he has the emotion. Uh, about emotion and how uh, uh, also a workshop like that give a, a, a man's life uh, for, for the client and also for the maison. You know, it's very important. For example, you know, uh, many, many sellers uh, visit uh, my, uh, my uh, presentation and uh, they are uh, a special emotion to see and they say, you, 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 give, uh, you give us uh, a special uh, man's life. Mm. Exactly, and this is also what we try to capture here in, this, uh, in these pictures uh, during some of the presentation in Homo Faber and in uh, different places with all the public and these uh, very young ladies. Unfortunately, we didn't ask for the, for the right picture, right? So she's a bit blurred, but she was so, so happy to see you, to look at you. Yes, and at this uh, first uh, Homo Faber edition, uh, I met uh, a young uh, woman, and uh, now she works with me. She, she's oh. uh, Italian, come from uh, Sicily, and Sicily. I am very happy because she's very talented. And uh, it's a very, it was a good rencontre also. You know. So we just need to ask you, can I work with you? And it works. Why not? Why okay. not? Okay, so we can <laughs> try. <laughs> if you have the talent, no problem. Uh, yeah, so we need, we, need the, we need the talent. So here are your hands also with your tools, the same is kind of tools on the, on the right. Uh, yeah. This one is, is another one, is, is a it's tool. The I, I, w I work with it in my school. Yes, it's, it's my first tour. Uh, I, I engrave glasses with this tour, exactly. Uh, from your school, you, yes. you were able to buy it and do, yes, to go it? Yes, oh, okay. yes, <laughs> exactly. As it was, uh, I was the last uh, to, to learn it. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, we was two, and I am the, the last to, to continue this, uh, this work. Yes. Okay. So as a, as a conclusion in our last, uh, last uh, slide, you wanted to, to show us two of these uh, clocks. Yes, I you like very much. Sorry, you told me a small clock, but that's not so small. No, no, it's, it's like that. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's 20 to, to, to 22 centimeters, 25 centimeters. It's, uh, it's a clock, uh, you know, uh, come from how the inspiration come from the rough in first. Uh, on the left, uh, you see it's uh, little the cosmos and how, uh, you know, uh, our stones come from the story of the u of the universe. And the, yeah, the sky. Uh, and exactly. What are the dots? Are diamonds? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. diamond and the star of diamonds and uh, and after uh, you see uh, how uh, uh, our inspiration come from uh, this rough of lapis lazuli and you have uh, uh, no people in jury in, jury, uh, in high jury use a, a stone like that. But what uh, what I uh, what uh, this rough interests me is because uh, it's, uh, it gives me this inspiration that give, uh, gives uh, the emotion. And on the right, you see, it's another uh, also in Labradorite. Uh, and the inspiration is uh, like uh, a sky blue and, uh, and cherry blossom. This, this angle is perfect because it's very rare to find a huge piece with the whole blue on the same uh, angle. It's a chiming, uh, yes, very it's uh, particular of, of this, uh, this stone. But for the picture, it's really nice because we have all the blue. Exactly, and it's white, you know, in first, uh, uh, 
the art you see, it's uh, what you want to discover. And my work also is to, to see maybe sometimes what uh, you don't see, but what, what I no, see me. Exactly. And also, Cherry Blossom, I like very much with the time because, you know, the Cherry Blossom is very, very fragile, like uh, my workshop. And it's a message to... Uh, it's a message that uh, you want <laughs> to transmit. <laughs> yes, you have to be uh, very prudent uh, about uh, how this work is very fragile, I think, for the young uh, generation. Thank you so much. It could be a, it could be a wonderful conclusion for, for us. I just wanted to ask you what, what is the material for the, for the, for the cherry blossom? It, is it was pink, uh, pink opal. Opal. Yeah. Okay. A wonderful, uh, a wonderful material also. Uh, I think we arrive at the, at the end of our. I am looking at uh, at Gisla uh, to 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 check if everything uh, if everything is okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. So uh, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I know that Gisla is making a lot of noise and uh, signs behind. So we probably have a lot of questions. Uh, thank you for your for your attention. So. Just before having our question, maybe your question, sorry, maybe we can talk about the next uh, conversation uh, we will have uh, thanks to Ghislain and Philippe Malguir. Uh, they will be talking about uh, engraved gems. Uh, so maybe Ghislain can come and uh, give us two words about the next, because you will do it better than me um, in the. It will be about the exhibition. The exhibition. In, yeah. Indeed, the School of Jewelry Art in Paris will launch an exhibition about cameos and interviews, as you mentioned at the very beginning. And I will be very pleased to be with the curator of the exhibition, who happens to be curator at the Louvre Museum, the very famous one, talking about um, cameos, intaglios, and collection of rings within the exhibition, walking through, strolling into it as if you would be there. So looking forward to having you there. Thank you, Gisela. You don't have to talk too much because my French accent is now so, uh, so, so <laughs> awful in comparison of yours. So thank you. You have time to go back to your computer and to give us the first question. Thank you, Gisela. Thank you to both of you. Lots of great comments. Everyone enjoyed. Um, there's one question. If there is the most difficult gemstone to carve in Glyptic, um, I would I like to say that it's um, the stone I uh, I never found. No, it's uh, the the for example sometimes you have uh, like emerald uh, uh, is fragile because sometimes you have a, a fissure, yes, uh, cracks, cracks uh, etc. But generally, uh, I think when when you uh, you realize a good um, a good creation, a good emotion. It's a, it's a good uh, réussite. Have you engraved every kind of gemstone? Meteorite, diamond? Meteorite, no. Diamond, I never try. It's so. possible, but uh, I am not also in the um, uh, comment dire, competition. It, uh, I, I <laughs> I, uh, I, when I have an inspiration with a stone, sometimes you can have a crack inside. You can have fissure, but uh, fissure. But uh, I continue to to work. It's not a problem for me. Thanks. A great admiration for the present creation, but also about the pieces of the past. How is it possible to engrave with no electric power tools? I think they use uh, the Jacques Gay have not electricity. They, he use uh, like uh, the power of the, of the wind of the, the water. Uh, yes, I think, but we don't know exactly how the Greek and the Roman uh, work. After uh, you can uh, you can work only with an arche. You know, like in uh, China, people do it uh, for yeah. the for the the nephrite. nephrite yes, in uh, Sri Lanka, I saw they they use it for the cutting or polishing. Yes, putting the wheel in rotation. Exactly. The the first you you need the rotation and uh, an abrasive. After the abrasive uh, diamond abrasive, it's also a modern uh, a modern uh, 
to, to, to cut it like that, it was yeah. difficult to find it. No? Yeah. I, uh, we will ask our art historian specialist. <laughs> I read that they use a, a special, very, uh, very hard uh, material, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, du corindon, corindon qui, yeah. qui, comme, comme from uh, Naxos uh, in, uh, in Greece. Okay. Yes, it's what uh, we use, uh, so the, we know the Roman we people and the Greek. We know where we go for our next uh, holiday. Yes, why not? To in check Greece. if there Greece is a current dome in Nexus. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, there is a question about one piece in your workshop, in the picture of your workshop. Someone noticed there is a bird carved in pink gemstone. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, is it something you created? Can you tell us more about it? We're pushing the picture for everyone. No, it it was it was a deal I did with with a friend seller of stones, and he gave me uh, this uh, this bird uh, like a present. It's not your <laughs> job, no, your no, work. It's not my job. It's typical a job come from uh, Ida Robertstein, and Robert it's it, it's interesting uh, also. It uh, it's very uh, I like it very much now. It's like my. Uh, Comme on dit, euh, mon porte-bonheur, mon de, dans yeah. l'atelier. Your lucky charm. Lucky charm. Yes. Uh, it is ro it, rose it, quartz. Yes, it was a present come from a seller, a friend. Lots of questions about petrified wood. Is that a stone or a kind of wood? Can you tell us more about it? Uh, in front, in first, I would like to say that I like very much. Uh, American people and the country because uh, there are many, many petrified um, material come from. I, at Tucson, I can see you have many amateurs uh, sell uh, what, what, what we found in their, uh, in desert, in, in no, their in country, in the desert. And, uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, and so, uh, so, no, the answer, sorry, the answer is no, it's a stone, so it is really silica. So it's uh, like the family of the quartz, yes. silicium and oxygen. Yes. Uh, but from the pattern of the of the organic material wood, which exists millions of years uh, ago, and which was all every every atom's molecule is replaced by a silica, so okay. it's really a stone exactly. considered a stone. And sometimes you have not this drawing like I like the the, the, the stones I chose because uh, I chose uh, what is uh, most uh, beautiful in the market because uh, I like it very much to find it and I, I have uh, I have this experience also you know so beautiful on your eyes so one maybe my last question is if I come with my stone. Would you agree to do it something with it, or you have to select by yourself? No, I can do uh, with your stone. Why? Why not? Okay, so yes. we can have an appointment. Why not? <laughs> if you, if you are yes, it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a story. A day, uh, designers uh, go to in in Darberstein to visit a special uh, seller of uh, of stones, and they they ask him, uh, "Do you have a very nice petrified wood?" And the, the seller say. Uh, the best petrified wood are in the workshop of Philippe Nicolas. <laughs> so <laughs> it was funny. There are lots of questions about transmission. Uh, does it exist a school to teach the glyptic skills in France or abroad? Est-ce que je uh, this is the problem, you know. Uh, you have uh, in in Italy, in Italia, you have a school where you can learn uh, how to uh, to to do um, cameo, but not with art stones. They work uh, on uh, marble, for example, how to engrave it. This uh, special uh, uh, sculpture. And after, uh, no, in France we have uh, we have no school, but you have school wo wo you where you you learn how to engrave uh, metal, steel. And after, in Germany, you have uh, you have school at Ida Robertstein uh, where you can learn. But uh, for me. Uh, they learn the technique, maybe they learn the design, but uh, but um, what is difficult is to transmit this uh, inspiration. You know, See, wh what is very very fragile because some people imagine that it's easy to work the stones. Yes, today it's not very difficult, but after what I present you is this inspiration too.
And the final question will be, um, what is the most important characteristic or quality to be a um, glyptic artist? Eh ben, it, it's a question for me, what I, what I have to, uh, to meet uh, young people. Uh, I have to work with, uh, with them uh, sometime. Uh, and uh, I have to work um, a time before to, to see if they understand what, what, uh, what I like. Um, uh, you, you can, uh, to be... Uh, very, very talentueux, but it's not what I want uh, in sculpture necessary. It's, it's, an, it's uh, an ensemble how to, uh, to have this uh, poetic uh, creation. You know? Yes, uh, as an example, you told me that some of your uh, students, your apprentices, are with different backgrounds. Yes. Uh, that's yes. not the background, it's quite important, but more, more, most important is really the eye and really to understand the material. It was it's very incredible, for example, with uh, Emily. Uh, with Emily, we have the same vision, uh, and it's very, very uh, curious. Uh, I, I never uh, find the same thing in, uh, as an uh, apprentice I had. And uh, also what I like to say that uh, uh, this vision of this workshop is unique uh, in the Maison Cartier. Uh, and in the story of uh, Jory, you have no workshop like that. Thank you. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, Gislain. Thank you all uh, for your attention. And I hope, I'm sure it was uh, uh, interesting for you. It was interesting for me. And uh, maybe we can meet soon in Paris, fortunately, if you can travel uh, with uh, these uh, wonderful exhibitions. Uh, so I give you, I, 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 I let you. Uh, follow us in our uh, net uh, internet, the next presentation. So see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you, bye Philippe. Bye. Thank you. Merci.